Hi, I'm Creston Jameson, and in this tutorial, we're going to cover PostgreSQL wall archiving with PG Receive Wall. This tutorial assumes you already have streaming replication set up. If not, watch my streaming replication tutorial from the link in the description below. First, we're going to go over a few slides that explain some concepts, and then we're going to jump into the command line to actually set up wall archiving using PG Receive Wall. All right, let's get started with PostgreSQL wall archiving with PG Receive Wall. So in terms of wall archiving, or that is the write ahead log archiving, typically your wall files are archived through the archive command configuration option that is located in PostgreSQL.conf. Now, as your database activity grows, managing wall files becomes more of a burden. Um, it can take more and more of your database's resources to copy off and potentially compress these files, uh, and you may want to dedicate more of those resources to satisfying queries. So there is another option called uh, PG Receive Wall. So PG Receive Wall lets you stream wall files to a remote server in real time and store the files on a volume. Now, its name is PG Receive Wall in versions 10 and higher of PostgreSQL. Versions below 10 are called PG underscore receive X log. Now this, uh, it's a command line utility. It connects to a DB using the streaming replication protocol to, in order to stream the files and places those in a directory on that machine. Now it is strongly recommended to use a replication slot so that you can avoid missing uh, wall files. All right, let's take a look at a live example using PG Receive Wall. Okay, for this example, I'm going to be using Ubuntu, and I have installed PostgreSQL uh, version 10, latest version, and I have a both a master and a replica set up. So I have a primary DB cluster called main, and that is what gets installed by default when you install Postgres version 10 uh, on Ubuntu, and it's running on port 5432. And then I set up a second replica cluster called replica on port 5433. And I'll include a link in the show notes that goes over a previous tutorial how this was set up. So in this tutorial, everything will be running on a single system, but you can easily set this up on, on multiple servers. So the first step is to set up a directory to receive these wall files. So I'm going to be setting up PG receive wall on the server, and it's going to connect using the stream, streaming replication protocol to place those files in a specific directory. So I want to go ahead and create that directory. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to essentially become the Postgres user using this command. Enter my password. And now I'm going to create this directory. Now, previously I created this first off. This is the default install path for the Postgres user uh, in Ubuntu when you're using it. I created this to store archived wall logs for these two database clusters. So I'm actually going to create a new folder in here called Ar Archiver because that's kind of what I'm going to name the replication slot I'm going to be using for archiving purposes. So I've gone ahead and created that. And just to be additionally clear what that looks like. So this is the main clusters wall archive area, the replica clusters. And then I have this third one I just created where I'm going to store the wall files that the archiver is going to be producing or essentially PG receive wall is going to be using. All right, the next step is to create a replication slot for the wall receiver. So I'm going to use this command, uh, select all from create physical replication slot, and I'm going to call it archiver. Okay, it's been created. And let's just take a look at what the slots look like. We can see there's the physical replica slot that is for the two currently running clusters I'm using. And then here's the new one that is currently not active. So active false. 
So now you simply need to start the um, command pg receive wall. So let me go over the configuration here. So D is essentially the directory where you're going to be writing these files. So I'm choosing the directory that I created. S is the name of the slot. So I created archiver for the slot. Z is a compression option you can use for a, a number from zero to nine. Zero is not compressed. And this option is newly available in PostgreSQL 10. So it's not available in versions below version 10. So keep that in mind if you're trying to like version 9.6. I'm specifying the host. Again, this is a local instance, the particular port, the user I'm using. This is a replication user that's uh, using setting up for replication. Because of how I have replication set up, I am using a trust. So I'm using the W option to not ask for a password. You will not want you will want to connect a different way. For example, maybe you want to use a .pg pass file to store the password um, that you're using to authenticate this command to the database you're streaming the wall from. And then I'm just using the verbose mode here to see more what it looks like. Okay, so I'm going to actually start it from here. Start the command and it said started, excuse me, starting log streaming at this particular point on timeline five. And if we look at the replication slots now, I see that both are active, both the replica and the archiver. Now you'll also notice that this is essentially taking over the terminal here. So in production, you're going to want to set this up, say as a system D service, so that this continually runs and it will restart. It, it starts itself on the reboot of the server, as well as restarts itself if there's a failure in the system for any reason. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and do a log, uh, excuse me, a log switch or a wall file switch using this command. Basically select pg underscore switch dot wall. Uh, and again, this is a version 10 command. Version less than 10, you have to use pg underscore switch underscore xlog. So this is going to archive, the, archive those files. And now if we take a look at the main cluster directory, we see 052e because I still have the archive command running. And if I look at the archiver directory, so this is what PG receive wall is it's producing it's saving its files here if we look at that we see we have the exact same file as well as it indicates partial ones as it's running it's going to place partial files for the uh, current wall segment and that's how you set up using PG receive wall um, I would say this is probably one of the most efficient ways to essentially get wall log files off of your master databases by using this utility because it just uses a replication slot to stream and then store those files. Now at this point you can use other utilities to be able to aggregate them or compress them and then send them to a long-term storage service such as Amazon's S3. I hope this has been helpful. If you want the commands used in this tutorial, be sure to visit the link in the description below the video. If you want to receive additional content and tutorials, please visit scalingpostgres.com and sign up. Thanks.